Uh, Scott, my name is Terry Thompson. I'm chief of police in Warner, Oklahoma. Say hello to the man on the other end of the phone. Hey, Terry? Yes, sir. How are you doing, Steve? Good to meet you. Terry Thompson. Scott? Chief Terry Thompson runs a four-man police department in Warner, Oklahoma. Population 1,200. He called to tell me about the big fish he caught. Check it out on this dashboard video. That's the chief, and the woman in handcuffs is the crook we ran out of Detroit. She took her con game on the road and wound up in the slammer. But why did she pick this sleepy rural town? How did the cops wind up snagging her? And how did the chief know to call the problem solvers? It's a heck of a story, and I'll tie it all up for you in a minute. But right now, I want to remind you of all the stuff she pulled in Detroit and how the problem solvers slammed dunk. She blew into town claiming to be a WNBA basketball player named Lorraine Miller. She had a lot of people eating out of her hand. She talked the talk and walked the walk. Here she is pumping herself up on our undercover camera. Oh, yeah. I'm one of those very few athletes that didn't have an ego, but most of them are my friends, so mm -hmm. they still have an ego. Problem is, she never played in the WNBA. It was just a con she used to finance a pretty nice lifestyle. She made a lot of money in Detroit throwing celebrity parties, but the celebrity she promised never showed up. She just uses you for what you're good for, and then she moves on to the next person. She's like a predator. She'd get close to people, gain their trust, then steal their identity and their credit. People like Diane Frowner. You had no idea she was running that condo in your name. No, not at all. I got on her case after this Fox 2 viewer tipped me off. I found out the imposter was traveling the country running the same scam. Sadly, she was hauling her kids around with her. Didn't even have them in school. You know you have warrants out for your arrest in two states? No, sir, I, don't. I finally confronted her as she was conning some guy out of his Hummer. She's stealing your car, man. We scared her so badly, she brought the Hummer back, then disappeared. Next thing I know, she's in the slammer in Oklahoma. The imposter who fooled so many people for so long in Detroit lasted only a few days in Oklahoma. She picked the wrong place to run her scams and landed in the Muskogee County Jail. And I'm proud to be an Okie from Muskogee. Life is slow and simple in Muskogee County. People trust each other and look out for their neighbors. If you come here down on your luck, they'll be more than happy to help you out. But if you show up and you're lying, uh, people around here don't have much use for you. We like living right, being free. And that's what Lorraine Miller did. She showed up with this phony sob story about how she'd just been through a nasty divorce and wanted to start a new life with her two kids. She picked Warner, Oklahoma for a reason. It's the home of Connor State College. Connors has a top-notch women's basketball program. Turns out Miller was recruited to play ball here back in the late 80s. But even then, she had problems, and it lasted less than two weeks. Her coach sent her packing. She had some problems keeping her hands to herself and, and as far as uh, other people's property. But that was 15 years ago, and the ex-coach was willing to give Lorraine Miller a second chance. When she showed up on his doorstep, he put her up in the local motel and gave her some spending money. Miller fast-talked her way right into the office of Dr. Donnie Nero, the college president. Told him she wanted to enroll, but she'd need financial assistance. And she said she had attended here. Uh, she was uh, four hours short of a degree. When Dr. Nero checked the records, he found out Miller had never taken a single class. And so we uh, decided there was more to it than, than met the eye. And there was something else fishy about this woman. She was telling some folks her name was Lorraine Miller, telling others she was Sarah White. So somebody dropped a dime on the chief of police. Here's somebody that's, you know, got two different names and it doesn't fit. The chief ran Miller's record and discovered she was wanted in Atlanta and Chicago. So he watched the motel, waited for her to leave, and pulled her over. She gave him a fake name and birth date. Fortunately for us, we you know, already had the heads up of who she was. And so she didn't get very far with that. At the county jail, Miller pulled something else from her bag of tricks, claimed she had tuberculosis. They had no choice but to take her to the hospital. Of course, she didn't have TB, but... She came, I think, very close to being able to walk out of the hospital. So how did a small-town police chief a thousand miles from Detroit find out about the problem solvers? Remember I told you how Miller stole Diane Frowner's identity in Detroit? When she was arrested, Miller had a copy of Frowner's license with her picture on it.
The chief called Diane Frowner and she told him to get a hold of me. I sent him a tape of my story and he was amazed. You ever seen anything like this? No, sir, I don't believe I have. She's my first. The tragedy of the thing is just the two children. The kids are now in a safe place. The state of Oklahoma is working to find them a stable home. Miller will be shipped off to Atlanta to face felony charges. She just couldn't escape the long arm of the problem solvers. And Muskogee, Oklahoma.